Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at In Magnificent Style from Worthington Games. Disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. I enjoyed the game Crowbar, also designed by Herman Luttman and using basically the same system as In Magnificent Style, but I did find some elements of the play in that one fiddly. Did this have the same problem? Let's find out and get to the list. First at number five, I'm gonna talk about something kind of nebulous, but it's definitely a pro for me, and that's the potential for the game to have a strong emergent narrative. And I'll say right off the bat, as a compliment, this seems to be a characteristic of most of Herman Luttman's designs, like he did Dawn of the Zed's third edition, which I adore for this. But the strong use by the game of random elements and random events, we'll talk about both of those in more detail later, and the way the battle lines kind of shift and things appear and different sides get attacked in different ways each time you play gives each game its own unique feel even though you're doing the same basic thing charging in Pickett's Charge and creates moments both comedic and tragic and dramatic as you play that can be quite memorable. But to get to the nitty gritty of the actual mechanics, my number four is also a pro, and it's one of the resources in the game that I enjoy, and those are your generals. So you have these three general tokens, and you assign them to different units at the start of each round, and they provide you a ton of mitigating options, although the main one is just a reroll of your dice, which might seem small, but can be huge in this system. And I enjoy these tokens for that mitigation, but also for the tough choices they give you, because you can put them with your units that are furthest ahead, try to drive into the Union line as quickly as you can. You can try to shore up your lagging units, try to catch them up with the rest of the line. But the closer you bring them to the opposing troops, the higher the chance you will draw an event that will wound or straight up kill them, which can then cause morale issues for your army later. Lots of cool stuff and very simple mechanics. I have another pro in my number three, focusing on the battlefield and kind of the structure and ebb and flow of it. So the first thing I want to focus on are the different colored areas. Your troops start moving in the green area, get to yellow, get to red, but a whole bunch of the events and elements in the game depend on where your troops are, which really gives you, again, in kind of the sense of the narrative, and really gives you this increasing sense of danger as they just unleash cannons and canisters and bullets at you. But then on top of that, adding a simple wrinkle into things are these obstacle spaces. And you have two main sets of them, one kind of in the middle at the Emmitsburg Road, and then one at the actual Union Line. And although it's just a single space, it makes advancing into that space dramatically more difficult in the die rolling, we'll get to that soon. And again, through streamlined mechanics, really changes the ebb and flow and feel of your troops. Like once they finally get past that obstacle, you feel relief, but of course the danger gets that much greater. It's a lot of fun. But I am going to finally go down to a mix for my number two, which is focused on the event cards, although I'll say this leans pro. A ton of elements in the game will make you draw these event cards. They're drawn at the beginning of each round, they're drawn based on several of the die rolls, and every single card has both a Confederate and Union event. And that's the first great thing about these. There is so much variety in what happens, really contributes to that emergent narrative I already talked about. But the main excellent thing it does is to give your opponents, the Union soldiers, the feeling of having a turn, the feeling of being active, even though the game is basically just all Confederate turns. These events will have them shooting at you, raining artillery down, putting obstacles in your way, lots of stuff. So that's all great, but the potential negative comes in with the very overabundance of these because so many elements can have you drawing them, and a lot of the time they don't even have an effect, so you draw the card, read all of it, and then realize it doesn't do anything. And there are also a lot of moments in the game where you have to do something kind of complicated like resolving bayonet combat, and I at least sometimes forget to resolve the event afterwards. So there is a little bit of that fiddliness I mentioned at the beginning of the review, but not too much. Generally these work great. And finally for my number one, I'm going to talk about the core mechanic in the game Game, which is the push your luck dice rolling and I'm gonna call this a full pro for me Although people who don't like dice probably won't enjoy it So the core idea of the game is you have nine units moving up in their column and every round you have to roll dice To try to move them up at least once using this little matrix of results and many results of these dice will push you forward a space or two Some of them will have you draw a gray or blue event But they might also cause damage to your unit again modeling the Union attacking you and the most important part of this is 
is the heavy fire roll. Because as you advance, you leave what's called your rally point behind, and the further you get, the more damage the heavy fire result does to you. And you can stop your turn after any roll and bring your rally point up to you and regroup for a second. And that's where all the tension and delicious decision making comes in. Yes, I say decision making. I know it's mostly random, but in the kind of overall strategy of where your nine units are and how many turns you have left and how much health each person has and where your generals are, the decisions still feel meaningful and impactful even if it comes down to a die roll and they have just consistent tension and excitement throughout. So overall, if you can't tell, I'm definitely a fan of this one. I would recommend it to light war gamers. Heavy war gamers might enjoy it as well. But also, I think non-war gamers will be able to get into this one because the mechanics are so straightforward. It's a very quick play. Solo gamers should like it. But that being said, if you fall on the opposite side of the gamer spectrum, this is definitely one to avoid if you don't like die rolls, if you don't like random events potentially messing up your plans. And of course, also I should mention the theme might be a problem for some gamers. You are controlling Confederate soldiers trying to win Gettysburg and basically overturn the results of the Civil War. And hey, if you want to see the game in action and see how I do not so great, check out the video that just popped up. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.